Hello, my friends, and welcome to Paulina Art. Today, I'm going to be doing a pet portrait. This is a portrait of a beautiful cat I had a long time ago. Her name was Chloe. She was so sweet and smart. And today, I want to honor her life by doing this portrait of her. I'm also going to share with you all the techniques that I use when doing a pet portrait. There's many ways of doing a pet portrait, as many ways as there are artists, but today I'm going to show you how I do it. A pet portrait requires a lot of hours. You have to prepare your canvas, prepare your sketch, and then to apply the different layers of paint in many sessions until you achieve the results that you're looking for. If you would like to see how I painted this pretty pet portrait of my girl Chloe, stay with me and let's paint together. I'm working on 11 by 14 canvas, which I have toned with white gesso and a drop of burnt amber. Now this is not the color my background is going to be, but because I tone the canvas, it gives me a starting point. Now the reference photo that I'm working with is very small. So what I did is I scanned this photo into my computer and I was able to trim it and print a much larger reference photo. Now, because it's been enlarged, it is a little bit blurry, but that's okay. Now, I did my sketch and transfer it already. I normally don't do a lot of details, but because Chloe has very distinctive pattern, I I did that into my sketch. If you like to sketch your own portraits, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, you can just trace it if you have a large, clear reference photo. The main thing at this stage is to get the proportions right. The size of the ear, the location of the eyes, just the proportions. I don't normally worry too much about details, except in this case, like I said, I place some of the markings. Now my next step is going to be to trace my sketch. I normally do this with a light brown, but I'm going to do it with a light gray. Another thing that I decide before I start painting are the colors that I'm going to use. By looking at Chloe's photo, I've decided that I'm going to use a lot of blues for the shadowing and a lot of warm browns and oranges. And the background is probably going to be a very, very dark brown or maybe a black. So just by knowing these things, it helps me decide on what colors I'm going to use. I have mixed a light blue-gray and with my fine liner brush, I'm going to go ahead and trace my sketch. This helps me to make corrections at this point. And also my sketch won't get lost when I start adding my layers of paint. It's much easier to do this on a flat surface but I like the easel because it gives me a good perspective of the face and it's easier for me to make the corrections instead of having this flat on the table. I can also start adding some some shadows at this time.
it's important to have a good reference photo, but sometimes you don't, and you have to, you have to make it work. Sometimes someone wants you to do a portrait of their pet. They don't have good photos, or, or their pet is gone now, and they only have a few photos. So you have to learn to work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a dark brown as my background. I'm going to use burnt amber. And if I want to darken it more later, I will do that. Applying the background color really helps when choosing the colors for the main figure. It helps with the intensity of the colors and the depth of the colors. I always pull the color inside too, so there's not a line between my subject and the background. Okay, my background is done for now. Now I'm going to start slowly building the color of the cat. I'm going to do some of the dark parts and some of the light parts, always looking at my reference photo. I'm not going to worry about the effect of fur at this point, but just ap applying the dark, the light, the orange, and so on. And I don't use a very precise brush. I like to use this round brush. This is an old brush but it works really good for this stage of the painting. Some artists like to do the eyes first, and I like to give my cat or my subject some shape first, and then I do the eyes. After this, we're going to go ahead and do the eyes. And the way I'm applying the color is very loosely, but following the shape that the fur goes. For the black color, I'm mixing my black with some blue, just to create a more natural black. What I try to do is find the resemblance early on 
in the process because it's no point you spending lots of time and hoping the resemblance will come. So try to find the resemblance right away. And by doing that, basically, you pay a lot of attention at the markings of the animal, the shadows, and just little details like that will make a big difference. Let's go ahead and put a base on the eyes. In order to create a lot of harmony in this painting, I'm using a very limited palette and I'm going to mix some of my colors. For the eyes, I'm mixing my yellow with, with white. I'm still using this big brush because I'm not worried about too much detail at this point. I'm just adding my first base of color. And I've added some blue to create this green color. You can dab the brush a little bit to create the, the effect of the cat eye. Gonna add a little more blue in the center. I'm not going to add the iris. And again, I'm using the my blue black with a smaller round brush, I'm going to add the highlight in the eye. I'm just dabbing again. You can add a little bit in here too. I'm going to blend a little bit in here. And you can always go back to the eye. You can always let it dry and then go back. The eyes are extremely important in, in any portrait. With the same blue, black and my small brown brush, I'm going to start defining the cat's eye. If you make a mistake, just clean it up with a damp brush and nothing's happened here. I'm going to intensify the iris. I'm intensifying the yellow. Okay, my friends, we have those beautiful feline eyes looking at us. Now we're going to keep adding our layers of colors, defining the nose, the mouth, and very loose, bold strokes because we're not worried about any hair detail at the moment. The only thing we want to continue doing is with our strokes following the growth of the hair.
I like to use a limited palette because I find the less colors I use, the easier it is for me just to mix, mix my colors. I'm now just darkening my my colors. I'm still not too concerned about making it look exactly like hair, but I'm I'm applying it, moving the brush a little bit so it's not just a blob of paint, but more a little bit more like hair effect. And don't be afraid to use bright colors when you're doing your pet portrait, like I'm doing, using blues and oranges. Just adds a lot of fun to the painting, just like your beloved pets are. And when you're doing the outer hairs, start from the edge Start from the edge and then do the next row this way, overlapping. And then the next one. So it will look more natural. I'm going to continue building the colors. I'm going to start adding a little bit more warm colors in here. And I'm still using the same same round brush. I love this brush, works really well for just about anything. I'm now going to start painting the nose and this is really going to help me achieve the resemblance. Most of the cat's body is being mapped out. I know where the colors are going to be, but a pet portrait takes time. This is probably two hours of work. So I'm going to let this painting dry. Okay, my friends, this is session number two. I've allowed the painting to dry really well for a couple of days and it's always a good thing to step away and look at it the next day or two this way you look at your painting with fresh eyes and you can really see what you need to do in this case i need to make a few corrections to the face i need to make the nose a little bit wider round up the eyes a little bit more and also I'm going to bring this in because her face looks, the jaw looks a little bit white. So I'm gonna bring it in here and I'm going to apply also another coat on my background. I'm going to do the adjustments on the face first. Then I'm gonna apply a second coat on my background. By that time, the face is going to be dry. And if I'm happy, I'm going to start creating the fur-like effect. I also have to finish the ears. I'm going to apply some, some pink in there. Let's get going.
For the inside of the ear, I'm going to do some floating. I have some floating medium at the heel of my brush and some alizarin crimson and burnt sienna on the toe to create a more natural pink. And with this, I'm going to do the inside of the ears. I'm going to work a little bit more on the ears just to add some depth before I go ahead and start adding the hair in, inside the ears. I'm just adding some depth inside the ear. And again, pay attention to to your reference photo. For the hair, I use the floating technique and that's what I'm going to start using now with a floating medium at the heel of my brush and the color at the toe of my brush. And this creates very natural hair effect. And I always start from the edge working my way in so that way the hair of the animal looks more natural. And I'm just zigzagging my brush to create this effect. And following the way that the hair grows on the animal. You don't have to do every single hair to create the hair effect. In fact, that probably would look a little crazy. And I'm going to use this technique to create the edge of the ear. There's little hairs around here too. Very small. I'm going to float with a light blue in this area just to add some light and a little bit of contrast. I'm going to do the same on the hair out here. just to give some light. And this creates a very pretty effect. And see with very little effort, it's already creating the effect of fur. And I'm going to use the same light blue gray to add fur in this part of my cat. And again, I, I look at my reference photo and follow the pattern of the fur. Don't be afraid of adding color to your painting. An animal portrait needs to be fun to represent the personality of the animal. And I think adding color 
really achieves that. And if you went over too much, you can always feather it with a clean brush. Chloe had really long hair, so I'm trying to do that in this painting. I'm going to do some floating around this area. Actually, I'm going to do it first on the cheeks. And I'm going to blend it a little bit. And here too. And I'm going to add some highlight around this area. Cuts usually have this area a little bit protruding. Just a very subtle effect. And I'm zigzagging to create the effect of the hair. Once you're done with your floating, you can start adding the illusion of hair. I'm using uh, my angle brush and I'm going to follow the way the hair grows, starting from the bottom up. Just the odd hair. You don't have to do every single hair. Just to create the illusion of fullness on the hair of the animal. With a small flat brush, I'm going to start adding the illusion of hair on the face of my cat. This has to be very subtle. just want to create a very subtle effect. And again, follow the way the hair grows. And I'm going to do the same with my dark, my dark colors. Just a subtle effect of fur. With the same flat brush and some white, I'm going to start adding the hair inside the ear. And again, pay attention how they look in your cat. I'm going to start doing the inside hairs first, and then I'm going to move to, to the outer ones, the longer ones. And Chloe had really long, long hair, even inside her ear. Curved a little bit.
can even add some on the outside too. And see how the ear comes alive. And it doesn't matter if the inside of the ear is perfect because once you add the hair, it just looks good. I'm going to add a little bit of hair at the top. Cats normally have some hair up here too. I'm going to do the other ear the same way. Okay, my friends, our second session is done. I am happy with the way the fur looks. The last thing we're gonna do in these paintings are the whiskers. And as tempting as it is to do them now, we are gonna let this sit and do it tomorrow. Just in case there's something that we cannot see today, something that we might want to adjust, because the whiskers is the last thing. So we're gonna let it sit and look at it tomorrow. And if we're still happy with everything we've done, we're gonna go ahead and add the whiskers. Hello, my friends, and welcome to session number three. At this point, you have to make sure your painting is the way you want to. If you notice something is not right, you can correct some things. A good way to check if something is not right is to put your painting with the reference photo in front of a mirror and then compare both. If there is something not quite right on your portrait, you're gonna see it right away and then you'll be able to fix it. Now the last, last, last thing you are going to do are the whiskers. If there is anything to correct, do not do the whiskers because once the whiskers are done, your painting is done. For the whiskers, I'm going to use this small flat brush. Some of the eyebrow whiskers come from here. And don't be shy when you do this, just do them. They have to be very thin, so I'm gonna clean them up a little bit with, with the same brush and some water. After you do two or three of them, you're going to become more comfortable doing them. And again, I'm gonna clean them up a little bit because I want them very nice and thin. But yet, I still want to see them. Chloe had really, really large, long whiskers. And the best thing is to carry your, your hand with the brush. The whiskers make such a big difference on the pet portrait. Okay, my friends, our Beautiful pet portrait is done. As you can see, a pet portrait requires many steps and a few painting sessions. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoy doing this pet portrait of my pretty Chloe. I hope you learned something new. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any future content from me. If you would like to support this channel, I'm going to leave a link to my coffee page on the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.